Thank you. So I am originally from Nigeria, and I have led volunteers on medical missions to that country for the past 10 years. Now, did you know that volunteers from the United States conduct 6,000 medical missions every year? And they invest over $250 million yearly. They bring their passion and share their talents and skill in order to improve the provision of healthcare services in developing countries. Now, you may have heard medical mission called medical brigades. It's the same thing. They're usually put up by nonprofits, church groups, schools, or colleges of medicine and nursing, just to mention a few. Think of medical missions as an expanded health fair that could last up to a week or even two weeks. So over the last 10 years, I've had the pleasure of not only working with family and friends, but also high school students who helped me package medications and medical supplies that we take with us on the medical missions. In fact, I'm already working on the next set of supplies that we will be sending in a couple of months because the clinic that we run will be running out of medications at that time. So that's just a little glimpse of what people like myself, volunteers like myself are doing right here in Indiana to improve healthcare services across the globe. So I got involved in medical missions because of a long-held dream to give back to the healthcare needs in Nigeria using my skills as a nurse. Now, I am a mom, and like most mothers out there, most, my first priority was raising my two sons. So I figured I would start going on medical missions when my children were older and out of the home. But two friends of mine really inspired and spurred me to action much sooner than I ever imagined, and I'm glad they did. So for example, my friend Mercy taught me how to raise funds to support the medical missions. And my friend Robin taught me what are essential over-the-counter medications to buy, how to package them, and ship them to where they're required. So in December of 2003, I traveled to Nigeria with my husband, Odi, and our two sons, Iji and Okena, to, just for Christmas and then to spend time with family members. So I kind of went prepared. Um, we visited the only hospital in town just to see how they're doing. Unfortunately, we couldn't take a tour because the medical director, Dr. Biadeze, was not available. So I just left a duffel bag filled with medications and medical supplies that I brought with me and left. Honestly, I was not planning to return before traveling back to the U.S. But then EJ, my son, who was only 14 years at the time, got sick with malaria. And I, I don't know how to treat malaria. So we needed the help of the local experts, and so we went back to the hospital. Fortunately, at this time, Dr. Biadeze was available, and he took care of EJ. Now, I will never forget the state of the exam room where EJ received his care, and I promised myself that I would renovate it, and I did. Six months afterwards, thanks to my friend Michelle, through whom I got a $600 donation. I also learned something really important from Dr. Biadeze that day, and that is they need medications and running water. Yes, running water. And I'm sure you're going, what hospital operates without running water? It took me six months to figure that one out. So if you have a family member in the hospital, you brought your own water for their use. Regarding medications, the doctors and the nurses know what to treat. The problem is they don't always have access to safe and good quality medications. So Dr. Biadazie and I agreed to work together. And over the past 10 years, we have made it our mission to provide healthcare services to anyone who needs it in the community where we do these medical missions. And so we've been able to serve over 100,000 100, patients through the, our annual three-day medical mission and a follow-up clinic that we try to run throughout the year. We have also been able to uh, in install water on site, 
to serve not only the patients but their families and people who live in the surrounding community around the hospital as well. And as it turns out, I didn't drop the ball when it comes to raising my children. They're doing really well. EJ, <laughs> EJ is now 25 and a burden entrepreneur who lives in California. My son, Okena, is 20 and a junior in college, so I didn't do too badly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, in spite of all of our accomplishments in Nigeria, and I'm sure many of you have heard on the news recently that that country is one of the few bright spots in overcoming the Ebola epidemic. There is still, however, a very difficult challenge. It is not enough to do a three-day medical mission or even a one-week medical mission because most health conditions do not stop after three days, right? Asthma, diabetes, high blood pressure last a, long, a lifetime. And so we must figure out how are we going to continue to provide healthcare services long term? How are we going to sustain healthcare services? In all the time that I have done this work, I am convinced that we must fully engage the next generation of young adults in these medical missions. So from my interaction with my two sons and other young adults, 18 to 29 years old, I know that particular group you know, have connect easily with people from different backgrounds. They have new and creative ways for solving problems. They're more flexible and they are definitely more technologically savvy than I am. You see, we can leverage all of these qualities to promote not only the medical missions, but to develop a healthcare system that lasts long term, not only in Nigeria, but in Haiti, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Ecuador, just to mention a few. You don't even have to travel in order to help or to make a difference. You can do it from right here in Indiana or wherever you may be. You see, we need those young adults, both from the United States and from the developing countries, to work together. They have to work together because when you and I return to the U.S., we need them to continue to provide healthcare services. Besides, when you are working with people, working in a different country, you need the people there to help you be successful because they're the people who know the lay of the land. They understand the traditions, the religion, the politics. So together, you can work then to fit the healthcare services within their social and cultural ways of living so that it works and can last over time. In addition to that, you know, healthcare is affected by multiple factors, by level of income, education, water, environmental sanitation, access you know, to good foods. Therefore, not only do we need doctors and nurses, we also need other young professionals to sustain healthcare. And so for that reason, for example, we need graphic designers who can help us develop educational posters and handouts for the patients because not all patients can read and write. We need plumbers to help us make sure water pipes are well connected so that when you flush the toilet, the water goes in the commode and not flood the floor. We even need people to help us package the medications and the medical supplies for these medical missions. And we need young body entrepreneurs to help us develop effective business models so that we can actually sustain uninterrupted conduction of medical missions and the operation of clinics for follow-up care. And together, we can fully develop a healthcare system that works long-term and that is the only way, at least one way, to fundamentally prevent outbreaks like Ebola epidemic. In the words of Margaret Mead, never believe that a few caring people can change the world, for indeed, that's all who ever have. Thank you so much.